The most difficult thing about launching a rocket is sometimes not the technical side, but the regulations. Obviously, no matter how fast your rocket building is, if the bureaucrat's paperwork shuffle is slow, your progress will also be slowed down. It was indeed a bitter pill that Elon Musk's rocket company, SpaceX, had to endure while headquartered in California, a hub for aerospace innovation that was once a dream for many rocket startups. This led to a historic change in SpaceX's headquarters location from the Golden State to Texas a place with more favorable conditions. While the move marks a significant shift with potential economic impacts on both states and the future of space exploration, it also raises a question. Does this move mean SpaceX will easily abandon California altogether, especially as its arch rival embarks on its own crazy plans? Tune in to today's episode to find out. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 88,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Elon Musk once viewed California as the promised land for innovation and entrepreneurship a place where he could realize his ambitious visions. His companies, Tesla, X, and SpaceX, thrived in California's supportive environment, which offered substantial government subsidies and a highly skilled workforce. Especially, SpaceX has strongly developed and built on the remaining heritages of the old space here. They took over an abandoned aerospace building in LA County and turned it into the highest volume rocket producer in the world. However, over time, Musk's perception of California soured due to what he described as over-regulation, over-litigation, and over-taxation, leading to a contentious relationship with the state that had once nurtured his success. Ultimately, his frustrations culminated in gradually relocating key companies' headquarters to Texas. For instance, Tesla headquarters made a big relocation from Palo Alto, California to Austin, Texas on December 1, 2021. This is because the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, refused to allow Tesla's Fremont plant to reopen despite Musk's demands due to COVID-19. Elon Musk made it clear that Newsom's move impacted factory operations amid a critical situation as Tesla began delivering its new Model Y crossover. Similarly, in 2024, the billionaire officially moved the headquarters of X from San Francisco to a lesser-known spot in Texas called Bastrop. Finally, that same year, it was the rocket company SpaceX's turn to move out of the Golden State and head to the Lone Star State. There are, of course, economic advantages to relocating a business from California to Texas. No corporate taxes, less regulation, and access to a growing pool of talent. However, there is more to this transition. Texas presented logical benefits that would never be available on the densely populated West Coast. There was plenty of open land for businesses looking to expand their operations. There was less traffic to deal with, and that meant people could move around faster and more efficiently. The tax is lower, the houses are more affordable. All of that helps to draw the young talent. Although relocating the headquarters started this year, in fact, Musk has been in the Lone Star State for years. SpaceX selected Boca Chica Beach near Brownsville, Texas, to build the new commercial launch facility in 2014. By early 2018, SpaceX announced that Boca Chica, which was later called Starbase, would be dedicated exclusively to the development and testing of its next-generation vehicle, Starship. This leads to a series of heavy investments from both SpaceX and the other businesses in the small border town, transforming it into a bustling area. Since then, Starbase has become a production and test hub for the Starship program. Six integrated flight tests of the rocket occurred at this place, with the inaugural test on April 20, 2023. Frankly, moving out of California is also political. There is a clear political difference between the two places, as California is increasingly becoming a Democratic stronghold, while Texas is famous for being a Republican-majority state. Musk's political alignment has become more apparent in recent years, as he has been vocal about his support for Republican policies. This has left his business empire a victim of Democratic retaliation. Most notably, the FAA wanted to delay Starship Flight 5 until after the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Now, with complete immigration to Texas, Elon Musk hopes his companies will have much more favorable conditions to grow. Nevertheless, saying goodbye to California doesn't mean SpaceX is no longer connected to the Golden State. 
The company maintains the rocket launch contracts with the Pentagon at Vandenberg Base and even further accelerates the frequency of rocket launches in that place. In October, SpaceX was awarded contracts for nine launches under the National Security Space Launch NSSL, Phase 3 Lane 1 program. More importantly, SpaceX has recently nailed getting the Space Force's approval to launch up to 100 SpaceX Falcon 9 launches annually at Vandenberg Base. This is the best middle finger ever to Musk's most aggressive attackers, the California Coastal Commission, who have cited personal reasons for restricting the nation's defense interests. In mid-October, the commission voted to reject SpaceX's plan to increase the number of rocket blasts into space up to 50 a year. Clearly, they have defied assurances from Space Force and Air Force officials that they will step up efforts to monitor the impact of rocket launches on nearby wildlife. Now, the end result is indeed a bitter pill for California officials. They initially rejected 50 SpaceX rocket launches per year, but the Pentagon ultimately bypassed them to grant 100 launches. The military's protection is the big motivation for SpaceX to maintain its footprint at Vandenberg. But that's not all. For a while, SpaceX and United Launch Alliance have competed with each other for lucrative military contracts, including the National Security Space Launch Program. In Phase 3 of the NSSL, while both companies were eligible to compete for nine launches, SpaceX won all of them, demonstrating the military's growing confidence in Elon's rocket company's capabilities. With these positive signs, it would not be unfathomable if SpaceX had increasingly been determined to set the bolder goals. The company is now building two landing pads at California's Vandenberg Space Force Base for Falcon Heavy. One of them is the SLC-6 launch complex to enable launches as early as 2025, allowing up to 50 West Coast missions annually. SLC-6 is also a historic site previously occupied by United Launch Alliance. This place would be SpaceX's fifth launch site in the United States. SpaceX previously leased SLC-4 in 2015 following a period of extraordinary growth fueled by commercial launch demand and the deployment of its Starlink Internet Mega Constellation. Besides SLC-4 and SLC-6 at Vandenberg, it has two launch pads in Florida and one at Starbase in South Texas. In a response to SpaceX's expansion in California, ULA CEO Tori Bruno has recently proposed a wild idea of positioning ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket not just as a launch vehicle, but as a potential orbital deterrent against adversaries targeting Space Force assets. In the other moves to enhance the competitive capability of ULA's next-generation rocket, Tori is active in expanding capabilities for the Centaur upper stage and promising to reduce the Vulcan's cost per launch to less than $100 million. ULA's efforts to save the company from its current disappointing situation. United Launch Alliance, a collaboration between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, has been a significant player in the aerospace sector since its inception in 2006. The company provides launch services for NASA, the Department of Defense, and other organizations, boasting over 155 successful launches and a perfect success rate. However, ULA's dominance is waning due to the rise of innovative private launch companies, particularly SpaceX, which has captured about 40% of Pentagon contracts in recent years. Currently, ULA is facing severe financial challenges as budgets exceed expectations and revenues decline due to delays in customer launches. This situation has led Boeing and Lockheed Martin to consider selling ULA to Sierra Space, a move that reflects diminishing interest from its parent companies. Reports suggest that ULA's value has plummeted significantly, with some claiming it may now be worth nothing. The company's struggles were further exacerbated by its reluctance to change. While ULA's Vulcan Centaur has not yet been certified, SpaceX has achieved over 400 launches with its Falcon 9 rockets. As competition intensifies, ULA's future as a leading launch provider hangs in the balance. Moreover, SpaceX always cemented itself as the leader in innovation, which we can see clearly in its Starship program. SpaceX's Starship program represents a groundbreaking leap in space exploration, showcasing the company's commitment to innovation and reusability. 
Designed as a fully reusable spacecraft, Starship aims to revolutionize how we access space by significantly reducing launch costs and increasing payload capacity. With its two-stage configuration, consisting of the Super Heavy booster and the Starship spacecraft, it is engineered to perform a wide range of missions, including lunar landings and interplanetary travel. The program employs advanced Raptor engines that utilize liquid methane and liquid oxygen, marking a significant advancement in rocket propulsion technology with their full-flow staged combustion cycle. As SpaceX prepares for Flight 7, the importance of this mission cannot be overstated. Following previous test flights, including the successful recovery of the Super Heavy booster during its fifth test in October 2024, Flight 7 aims to further validate the vehicle's capabilities. This mission will not only test the performance of Starship, but also refine its reusability features, which are critical for future missions to Mars and beyond. The Flight 7 mission profile involves the launch of the combined Starship Super Heavy vehicle from Boca Chica, Texas, a return to the launch site of the Super Heavy booster rocket for a catch attempt by the launch tower, and a water landing of the Starship vehicle in the Indian Ocean west of Australia. Mastering the booster catch will pave the way for the attempt to catch the ship in 2025. The ability to catch both stages of the rocket with the launch tower's systems is a game-changer that could lead to unprecedented launch frequencies and cost efficiencies. Given the many similarities with Starship Flight 6, the FAA could easily grant a launch license for the upcoming flight, which is scheduled for January. On December 17, the FAA officially issued a license modification, publicly announced on X. The agency stated, Today, the FAA issued a license modification authorizing SpaceX to launch multiple missions of the Starship ER Super Heavy Vehicle on the Flight 7 mission profile and vehicle configuration. The FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental, and other licensing requirements for the suborbital test flight. This signifies that all critical factors, including public safety and environmental compliance, have been satisfied. Areas that previously posed delays for SpaceX, notably the recent flights have avoided intervention from environmental agencies, signaling substantial progress in addressing these concerns. Talking about Starship success can't help but mention the iterative approach SpaceX employs that has allowed for rapid advancements and adjustments based on test results. This flexibility has been crucial as the company navigates challenges and optimizes designs for maximum performance. Moreover, Starship's capacity to carry over 200 metric tons of cargo makes it suitable for ambitious projects such as deploying large satellites and supporting NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. In addition to its technical innovations, SpaceX is also focusing on sustainability. The design of Starship aims to produce minimal space debris while utilizing recyclable materials, contributing to a more environmentally friendly approach to space travel. This commitment aligns with Elon Musk's vision of making life multiplanetary by establishing a human presence on Mars. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.